Are you tired of the endless search for the perfect foundation shade? You don't know if you're cool, you're warm, you're neutral, or maybe you're that mysterious olive that no one has foundations for. I've got you today. I'm gonna show you some easy ways to tell you exactly what your undertone and what does that mean for your makeup products? What colors of products should you be buying based on what undertone that you have? For you new to my channel, my name's Marlena Stull. I've been a product developer and brand owner for many years now, and I teach over at the Makeup Geek Academy. So if you like educational videos, you wanna learn more, you can join me over there at makeupgeekacademy.com. Let's jump right into this video. Now let's talk first about the four categories of undertones. Yes, there are four. Most people only talk about three. I got you here. First one we have is cool undertones. So cool is going to have a lot of red in the skin. If you have fair skin, your skin's going to lean a little bit more pink looking. That is not the same as having redness on the skin from like discoloration, acne, breakouts, rosacea, all that. We'll talk about that in a second, but you're going to have red in your skin. If you have deeper skin tones, you are going to see more red versus more golden undertones. Second undertone is warm. Now warm is going to have a lot of yellow in it. If you have a very golden base, if you look in the mirror and you see a lot of yellow, that is going to be warm. Third undertone is going to be neutral. You are not either red or yellow, you're kind of in the middle. A lot of you guys, if you're like, oh, I just don't figure it out, it's so confusing, chances are you could be neutral. So you're a mixture of yellow and red, which is gonna kind of give you like for fair skin, for me, I'm a neutral. I lean kind of that peachy tone. I'm not super golden, but I'm not really pink. I'm kind of like that, what am I? That's neutral. And then the fourth and mysterious undertone we have is olive. And that is one that gets ignored in the beauty space. And that's where you have just the slightest tint of green. And I'm not talking halt green, you guys, I'm talking like, it's kind of a khaki color. So if you have kind of a golden skin, but you notice that it's not really yellow, it's kind of golden with a hint of that olive color, that's olive undertone. It's really common with people who have backgrounds of like Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, even some South Asian countries. But if you feel like you're warm, but you're not really, really yellow, you could be an olive. Okay, so what's the first way to figure out which one you are? This one is not my favorite, but it's what a lot of people talk about. And I used to teach this years ago. And now that I'm older and have more experience, it's not my favorite way, but you can check your veins. So if you look at the veins on your arm, if they look a bit more blue, chances are you can be more cool skin tone. If they look very green, you could be more warm undertone. And if they look kind of teal, chances are you could be neutral. This is not my go-to method because there are some people that have cool veins. They have blue looking veins, but their skin is actually warm. So it's not my favorite way, but it is one way that you can test it. The second way is by jewelry. This is not my favorite either, but it's another option. If you gravitate more towards golden jewelry, you probably have warm or olive undertones. If you really gravitate towards silver, then you probably have cool undertones. And then if you kind of go back and forth, you're like, oh, I like silver and gold. I feel like they both look good on me. You could be a neutral. Again, it's not my favorite way to tell, but it is one option. Like for me personally, I know I have neutral skin and I do wear gold and silver, but personally I prefer gold. So I wear that more. If I went by just that method, it'd be like, oh, you have warm skin. I don't, I'm a neutral. And then the third way, this is my go-to way to tell what undertone you have is by using a white paper and putting it up to your skin and saying, okay, if I look up against a clear canvas of white, do I see more red? Do I see more yellow? Do I see kind of like a khaki goldeny green color? Or do I see kind of more orange, a mix of red and yellow? That can kind of tell you your undertone as well. And that's my favorite method to use. And then the last way that you can tell what undertone you have is by your hair color. What hair color do you look good in? If you have blonde hair, do you look great in a nice, very warm kind of goldeny blonde hair or do you look better in a more ashy blonde that's kind of a bit more neutral or cool tone that can tell you as well what your undertone is because usually this is generally you guys that the hair color that you have if it leans more warm or cool is going to look better on what undertone your skin has as well and then say you have darker hair do you look great in a very true black that has a blue black kind of base to it that is definitely more cool and you'll look great in that or do you look good in like a very brown black that has some warmth in it, a little bit of red into that black, then that could be leaning more warm. A great example of a celebrity, you guys, that I can tell that she is actually neutral, which we'll talk about in a second too, is Taylor Swift. When I look at Taylor, my first thought is like, oh, I think she's cool skin just because she has fair skin, blue eyes, and blonde hair. But if you look at Taylor, she wears different hair colors. She has a warm blonde. She wears an ashy blonde. She has kind of a neutral one that's not super golden and it's not super ashy. It's in between 
between. She pulls them off, I think, pretty well. So when I see her, I know for sure that she has neutral skin. But some other celebrities, if I see them with a very golden type of hair and it goes well on their skin, like I think of Rihanna, like she has the most beautiful skin and I see her with like, you know, the red hair colors or this kind of like caramelly brown. It always looks so stunning on her because her undertone naturally, I believe, is warm. So that can be an indicator too, is like what hair color do you have? Which direction does it lean? Is it cool? Is it warm? Is it neutral? That can help you figure out your undertone too. So now let me show you some of celebrity examples of all these different skin tones because honestly, seeing other people that have your same undertone can kind of help you figure out what you actually have. So let's start with cool undertones. The first celebrity I have is Anne Hathaway. If you look at her in natural light, she leans a bit more cool. You notice that her skin has a slight pink tinge to it, a little bit more red in there. It is very subtle, but when I see her, I feel like she has cool undertones. She always has a rich dark brown that leans a little bit more cooler. So I feel like because that hair color works really well for her, that her skin is going to align with that as well and is going to be that cool undertone. Another way you can tell what undertone you have is by the colors that you look good in. Do you look great in blues, purples, and pinks? You could have cool undertones. If you feel like you look really great in reds, orange, and yellow, you could have warm undertones. If you feel like you could pull off both, you could be a neutral. And generally with olive skin tones, you look good in the warm colors as well. The oranges, reds, and even some pinks, and that could be olive undertone. Again, this is not my favorite example to use, you guys, because it's usually a preference of what we like to wear. But if you feel like your closet is definitely leaning in one direction of, of like cool undertones versus warm, that could help you figure out what your undertone is too. Now, what does all of that undertone mean when it comes to picking your foundation? When you go to shop for a foundation, you are going to look for a labeling system. Most brands do this now where it says C, W, or N. Most brands don't have O for olive, which sucks. So if you do have olive skin, get a warm and then just get a blue mixer like this. There's several brands that have it. I like the LA Girl one the best. I'll link it below for you guys. You can add just the tiniest bit of blue to a warm foundation and it'll turn it olive. But when it comes to foundations, it's usually usually labeled warm, cool, neutral, and it starts with the lowest number usually is going to be for fair skin, and the higher the number is going to be for deep skin. So for me, I know my general foundation range is around a two. I'm not porcelain, but I'm not medium skin. I'm kind of like fair medium, and so I know most foundations I'm going to look for a level two. So 2.5, two, sometimes a 1.5, and I know that I'm neutral, so I'm always going to get an N. So when I find any new foundation, I automatically look to see what their numbering system is. They're usually pretty consistent, especially if it's a more premier brand sold at Sephora. They're going to have that labeling system. So I always look for dead on. Okay, N2, that's going to be where I start. Get a sample, test it, see if it works or not. And it's pretty close to what I am. So 0 to 10 is usually porcelain going up to 80, up to 100. Some brands use like 60, 70 in there because a lot of brands are still not good in 2024 of having good options for deep skin. It's another Pandora's box we will talk about later. But usually the higher up the number goes, it's going to be the deeper skin. So just kind of figure out over time, you guys will kind of get used to with the labeling system once you find one that actually works for you. But again, for undertone, look for a C if you're cool. Look for a W if you're warm. Look for an N if you're neutral. Now let me show you swatches of foundations in varying tones so you guys can see. So I'm going to start off first with a warm one. This is a NARS foundation. You guys know they always run really yellow. So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to do a really good swatch so you guys can see on my skin. Do you see how yellow that looks? The next to it, I'm going to put this Dior one, which is a neutral. Now at first you're like, oh, that doesn't look too yellow until you compare it to a neutral one. Do you see how much less yellow there is in this one? Now let's do a cool tone one. This is the Laura Mercier. Even less yellow and red here. So it's like we're going down the rainbow. And then the last one I have is the Makeup by Mario. This is actually a more olive skin one. So let me show you that. Do you see how that has kind of a khaki base? Olive foundations are almost like a warm with some green mixed in. So it's like yellow and green in here. So there's the four finishes. We have warm, neutral, cool, and olive. And then lastly, how does this undertone play into your blushes? Can you wear whatever blush you want? You absolutely can. Your undertone doesn't really dictate the blushes that you wear. Like I have in my collection, I'm neutral. I have pinks and corals. If you want your blush 
to blend in with your skin and kind of melt into skin and not be a focal point, choose a blush that is the same undertone as your skin. So for me, I'm neutral, but a lot of the foundations I use lean warm. So I tend to gravitate towards more blushes like this, a peach, a coral. If you have deeper skin, it's going to be a bright orange. It's going to be kind of a rusty, even like a terracotta color. Those work great for deep skin, but anything in the warm family of blushes will kind of melt into your skin a little bit more. But if you want your blush, to pop and really stand out, you're going to choose something the opposite of your skin tone. So let me show you examples, you guys, on each side of my cheek of a pink and a peach. My foundation I'm wearing today is pretty neutral, leaning maybe a little bit warm, but let me show you what it looks like on one side. So I have this pink blush from Patrick Ta, and I'm going to put pink here. I'm layering it on top of what I have right now. But do you see how that pink is really popping? It's standing out because my foundation I have underneath is leaning a bit more warm. But look what happens on this side. Same depth of color. Color, same brightness. It's not super saturated or anything like that. I'm just going warmer. Look what happens here on this side. Do you see how this is like it's melting into my skin a little bit? So for me with my eye look that I'm wearing, this is a very dramatic eye. I want that to be the focal point. So I would pair this eye look up with a blush that matches my undertone. So I'm going to lean a bit more coral. But say I have a more simple eye and I really want to have my cheeks be the focus, I'm going to choose a pink blush because it's opposite of the undertone of foundation that I use usually wear. Here's the difference. Look at this side. Cheeks are popping. Cheeks are popping. This side. Cheeks are glowing. They're just softly melting together with that coral blush. I hope all of this was helpful for you all to figure out what undertone do you have. If you want to see more education, go check out makeupweekacademy.com. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I will see you guys next week for another makeup and fragrance. I do fragrance on this channel as well. Videos on this channel. So have a great one, you guys. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.